Hi guys, it's Joanne Boone Thomas here and welcome to another free tutorial. This one is a very simple one and it's actually a warm-up for my patrons. Uh, it's just in two colours and it's a nice little winter scene so it's quite a simple one but it is a warm-up uh, because I'm going to move my patrons on to the next stage which is to paint a big full colour water colour some snowy landscape. So if you are enjoying the free lessons then please do subscribe and like that would mean so much to me. So thank you in advance for that. If you would like to take your art to the next level, then why not join my Patreon group? I won't hold you to ransom. You don't have to stay with me forever. You can do a month or two months. It's not too expensive. And there's an awful lot on there already. The subject matter is very varied from landscapes to florals to animals. So there's a lot to choose from. And we also have our Facebook group as well, which is a private group. Uh, for members to kind of share their work uh, and receive feedback from myself and other members. So it's a great thing all around. So if you're interested in joining my Patreon group, then just scroll down and you'll find the link below. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this and uh, let's get, get those brushes out and let's get started. So this is the painting that I want you to have a go at and I'm sure you're going to really enjoy this. Before we get started, what I want to do is I want to do a little warm up with you. So let's move this one over to one side and let's bring this one in here. Now, this one, it's it's got all the elements that it has. It's got the, the distant trees. It's got the watery reflections. It's got one of these lovely birch trees. And of course, it's got the snow as well. So it's it's got all the elements we need really to, to kind of play about, become familiar with these techniques before we move on to this painting. So let's move this one out of the way. Okay, so I'll put my little study here uh, and I've just cut a piece of Bockingford paper. I'm not going to tape it down. It's quite a thick paper, so there's no need to do that. Sorry, I'll just pull my chair in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, nice clean water little palette here. I'm going to be using, by the way, the Paint Grey Blue shade. There's already a bit of it on that palette. And a little bit of yellow ochre. Now, I'm using two colours really, aren't I? I'm using a yellow and a blue. So you can use any colour you like. In fact, Prussian looks really nice as well. Uh, we'll move those out of the way. Pencil. I'm not going to put any wax resist into this. Those who know me well know I love a bit of wax resist, but I'm not going to do it with this one. Well, I'll try not to anyway. Uh, two brushes here, a size 10 and a size 8 round brush. That's all you need. Okay, so let's put our drawing in first. So first of all, we need her horizon line. So we will have it quite high up in our picture. And I'll leave a little gap here for this gorgeous tree that we're going to bring across. You know, I'm supposed to be an artist. I can't even draw a straight line sometimes. But there we go. That's as straight as it's going to get. <laughs> okay. We can now think about this shape that's going to break here, which is this, this kind of lovely cylindrical kind of birch tree. And we can hang some kind of branches on that. And as well as kind of drawing a straight line, I kind of like to get that cylindrical feel going. So I'll draw some shapes like that that are going to help us to create that shape. And we're going to sit that into the snow. I'm making this one a little bit bigger, by the way. Okay, let's have another little branch here. Maybe, maybe rule of three is always good, isn't it? Three branches, there we go. We'll bring that shape down. And then we can kind of think about the snowy bank that it's kind of sitting on. So straight line, a curve, straight line, you don't see it, a curve, straight line, a curve, straightish line, a curve, we'll kind of bring that in, something like that, there we go, so that is the bank of the snow now, and you can see my drawing's not great, I've got lots of lines that I might kind of get the eraser on, but remember this is a little quick kind of play about. There we go. Now we want to put the distant trees in as well and we're not really going to draw them. But what we're going to do is indicate where we would like them to be. So I'm going to start off quite high here and put a mark maybe coming down here, here, so they get smaller and smaller 
as they come down onto the right hand side. And it's a great way as well, putting these distant trees in to show the lightness of this tree. And I'm going to show you how we can produce these just using the side of our brush very effortlessly, effortlessly. Okay, let's draw another line here because we're going to leave a little gap here. There we go. And really, that is all the drawing you're going to need. So drawings in. If you want to, by the way, you can add some wax resist to this, couldn't you? Uh, I'm not going to do that on this, this occasion. I'm going to take my large brush. And we're just going to give that sky a bit of colour. So I'm just going to go into that yellow ochre and just pull a little bit of colour across. Now, at this point, I would like to try and avoid going into the tree if I can. And we're going to bring that colour all the way down. So when we put the wintry trees in, we'll be able to see this yellow wash coming down here. You can stop at any point where you don't have to take it all the way down to this line. I'm going to take a little bit stronger colour now. So just dipping my brush back into that and I'm just going to sit that yellow on that line. And I'm thinking about bushes and shrubs. So I'm kind of pushing my brush up in this direction. So it's going to catch into this already wet wash. I'll have to use the point of my brush here. So I don't paint into our little tree. There we go. Now, we're going to let that dry. But while we're waiting for it to dry, let's think about putting some other washes in as well. So we've already put this light sky in and this strongish yellow colour here. So let's do it again and let's put it underneath here. And let's remember to leave that little white line. It's all about, you know, filling your brush full of water and not painting with the point of your brush, you know, really making your brush do the work. Okay, and that's, that's the advantage of using a big brush. I, I know big brushes can be very scary, but actually <laughs> they're the best thing you can have because it just doesn't allow you to fiddle too much and it also allows you to fill in you know, a much greater surface area than you could with a little brush. In and out of these shapes now, bring that wash down. I'm going to add more water as I come down because I want it to get a little bit lighter as it comes down to this point. Now, you can see I have an awful lot of water on the paper. So I'm going to grab a little bit of tissue paper. And I'm just going to dip in the edge of that just to lift that off. Now one of my lovely hairs has gone into my wash. We don't want that in there do we? Just dragging that into that and if you find you've you know you've got a lot of water here just just lift it off. You can do it with a thirsty brush or you can just make these kind of nice horizontal movements here just to give that water a bit of movement as well. There we go. Put this issue down. Okay, now it's still very wet, isn't it? I can see a few little bits I've missed here, so I'm just gonna go in there. It's still, still very, very wet, but there are things we can still do. So let's go back in with a pencil because you might wanna add some of these little pockets of uh, grasses and things like that. So we'll have maybe, maybe a baby one here. Some little shapes coming out, maybe. Maybe a bigger one here, a small one, maybe a slightly bigger one. I mean, here actually added one here and I've broken the line and put them into the water. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Again, I, I do like an odd number. So, okay. Now, this is very wet and there's not a lot we can do at this moment. Uh, so we're going to let this dry and we're going to work into those background trees. Okay, our washes are nice and dry. Uh, and now let's let's practice this technique here. OK, uh, I've got a scrap of paper here at the side of me. I usually have a scrap. Uh, I put that there just to keep that clean so you can see that I'm a very tidy person. But actually, I'm not. Uh, but I digress. OK, so a piece of paper is there. And that is a handy thing to have when you're doing this technique, because what we're going to do is we're going to wet our brush and we're going to roll it around in that wash. 
kind of single cream consistency, okay? Now, if you're using a paper that's got a lot of texture in it, then this will work even better. This is a not surface, so it's got a little bit in. Okay, so the brush is loaded. Let's start to drag that brush on its side. Can you see that? So we can do that here, can't we? We can drag our brush on its side. Obviously here we have to be a little bit careful, but basically we can kind of just drag it down. If you run out of paint, which I have again, just losing some of that paint and then putting it back in. Okay, now we can start to introduce a few little kind of stalks and stems and tree trunks and things. It's coming down like that. So I'm using the point of the brush to do that. And then I can go back in, sitting my brush on that line and just pushing that wash up into that area. Now, let's just get that nice and straight. You can play around a little bit if you feel that, you know, it's not working for you or you may want to have maybe another little shape here again just take the side of your brush and just just pull down that you can just add a few more little shapes there we go i'm going to clean my brush and while this is still wet i'm going to go into that yellow again and i'm going to push that yellow up into that wet wash just pushing it up Keeping it on that nice line. So it's giving us this kind of distant, misty feel. Should we do the other side? I'm cleaning my brush. I've got a little bit of tissue paper here as well, just to take that excess water off. We're rolling our brush on its side into that wash. We can scrape a little bit of that paint away. It's a very light touch. I mean, you're just skimming that paper. You're not pressing too hard. Don't worry about the side of the tree. We can come in with a pointed brush and put that in. Let's put some nice stems in here. Point of the brush. Look where I'm holding my brush as well. I'm holding it right near the end so I can get these lovely loose kind of marks. Whereas if I'm holding it here, I'm making quite tight little marks. Well, that's quite important, I think. A few more branches up here, side of the brush, just losing some of those. I can come in now with the point of my brush just to kind of just tidy up round there. Maybe a few more little specks here. Back into the yellow, so I'm cleaning the brush. Back into that yellow and I'm just going to push that stronger yellow up into that area. And there we go. It's just a suggestion, but it's it's kind of nicely done, isn't it? You know, it looks effortless uh, and it looks actually quite stunning because you can see all the little bits of light through the, the gaps in the trees. So we really need to let that dry before we even attempt to put in our tree. Here's a nice little tip as well. If you want to use your fingernail, this is why my hands are so bad <laughs> because I like to kind of get my fingernail and maybe scratch in just a couple of shapes here, maybe, just to suggest those little branches. We can put the reflections in there though. That's something that we can do. So let's think about what we've got here and reproduce it here. So we've got a much kind of stronger yellow, haven't we, underneath here. We'll bob that in, that yellow again. And then I'm going to start to introduce a little bit of the blue. So we're pulling that down and we'll add a little bit more paint on my brush. Remember, it's always going to dry lighter. It's always going to dry lighter. We'll just do this section for now. We can come back to that. Now we can start to kind of go, okay, so let's start now to introduce some shapes here. They don't have to be exact. We're painting in a very loose way, so don't worry about that. Pulling those washes down. 
maybe some gaps perhaps. And then I'm going to pull that wash into that little nook and cranny here. Around that snow area. Here we go there, look. We'll pull that down into that section. We'll have a little bit here as well. I'm going to clean my brush. Nice and clean. Lots of water on that now. And I'm going to start to pull out these shapes. So they're softening back into this dry wash. Lots of water. You can come back and make that a bit darker if you want later on. Try not to fiddle with it at this point. And there's those reflections. Let's just quickly catch this side while it's nice and wet. Again, around that tree shape. Oh, went a little bit dark there, so I'm going to even that up a little bit. Again, we're using that dark to create the light of the snow. Can you see? So we're not painting that snow area at all. If you want at this point, you can see I've got lots of water on here. I can just take a little bit of tissue and just pull out some nice shapes. Again, I'm kind of doing that horizontally. So it's kind of suggesting a bit of a, a bit of a shimmer on that water. Okay, it's time to stop doing that now. So you can see we've got the sky in, we've got our trees in, we've got a kind of loose reflective feel to that water. While this is still wet under here, let's think about giving it a kind of edge. So I'm going to go on with the yellow, which I didn't do here, but I think it'll look quite nice to go in a little bit of yellow on the edges here. I might put a little bit into that as well. Clean my brush. And I'm going to take some of the blue. And I'm going to drop that into that wash as well along the edge and I look cleaning my brush just got my old scrumpled up tissue there just taking the excess off and I'm now using this part of my brush I'm pushing that back pushing that back so it kind of connects with that now there are going to be casualties along the way you're going to get little blobs but it's just quite an effective way of doing that isn't it of giving that snow and edge let's let's do this one so let's put a little bit of that yellow in here clean our brush a little bit of the blue clean the brush edge of the brush pull pulling that out there we go now we also want to think about how we can create a kind of lead in to our picture as well. So let's do that with these little scribbles we put down earlier. So we'll put a little shadow color in here and one in here. We'll put a smaller one here and a smaller one. Oh, maybe a couple of baby ones going back. That's breaking my rule, isn't it, of uh, odd numbers. Let's just take that yellow and just drop a little bit in. You can get your nail or the end of your brush and just, just pull out some of those shapes. You can always go back in and add a few more later. Who thought that the end of your brush could be such a wonderful tool to use. I'm going to put a little bit more shadow work into the snow as well now. So I'm going to just take a very, it's a very light wash, but just kind of just pull in some shadowy feel into that. It's going to, it's going to dry like it's hardly even there, but it's, it's quite nice, isn't it? Because I know the snow is white, but we just want to take the edge off that snow. Make it a little bit, a little bit of value into that. Now, 
I don't know about you, but my paper is absolutely soaking wet through. So we're going to stop for a minute, let it dry, and I'm not going to put the dryer on it. I'm going to let it dry naturally because there's a lot of water on there and you don't want to kind of blow your wash in the wrong direction. So let it dry naturally and we'll come back and put the final touches onto this. Nice and dry and ready to put some detail onto our tree now. Uh, you can use a combination of the two colours for the tree. Uh, we're looking to keep one side of it nice and light. So, uh, you know, just imagine the snow is just kind of hitting the side of that tree. So let's wet it down and let's, let's use a little bit of the yellow, not too strong. And we'll just pull that down, down one side. It's nice and wet. While that is still wet, let's take some of the blue. And again, not too strong. A bit water into that. And I'm going to kind of do what I did with my pencil now. I'm going to kind of use it as though it is a pencil. So I'm putting the line down with the side of my brush, but I'm also kind of bringing around that sideways stroke to suggest the snow and the bark. It's kind of giving me this little frosty feel. Doesn't matter if you lose some of the whites. It's nice to keep just a few. Again, swinging that brush round. And putting that dark in. There we go. We do need to let it dry for a little minute before we start to put really dark touches in but while we're doing that I'm just going to take some of the black I have gone down to my small brush by the way in case you hadn't noticed my fiddle brush okay um, with just a flick of this brush now we'll just indicate a branch let's do the same here you can see where I put a little scratch mark before so that's kind of nice to have one two and we'll bring this one right out so we'll bring it out We'll make it part of that tree. Let that blend back into that shape. There we go. Now it's nice and wet. And I want you to be quite brave now. And I want you to take your brush. You can mix it with the yellow as well if you want. It's going to create a dark colour. So if, it doesn't matter if it's kind of a greenish colour. Now this is quite a strong mixture. Look how strong that is in comparison to the wash we've already put down. But you are putting it into a wet wash, so that is gonna dilute it. So don't worry too much about that. Let's just tap our brush into that wet wash. Let it just do its own thing. Connecting that shape, oops. Connecting that shape, pulling the brush round as well to create that lovely kind of cylindrical feel. Bringing that wash down. Maybe a few more little shapes. I'm going to go with my nail to create some sharper edges. So there we go, the tree's in. It does look dark, doesn't it? It does look a little dark but it's going to dry lighter and of course if you think it is too dark in places there's nothing stopping you just tapping a little bit of tissue into that just pulling some of that wash away that, that looks quite effective so yeah perhaps do that <laughs> now i'm going to use my nail you can use the end of your brush or your nail but i'm going to come in and just give it a few little kind of carefree shapes like this bring that nail or the end of your brush down there we go so it's got that lovely kind of feel to it hasn't it dark on one side going to lighter to lighter to the white now we always want to show off a light don't we so there's a nice little tip we'll just take some of that blue and let's get the pencil so i can show you more clearly so let's pull this shape down here if I put just a smidge of that blue here, it will show off the light. Any, any, anything dark colour, it doesn't matter what it is, it's just a value. I'm going to put a little bit more into that, just to show off 
the light on here. We're nearly good to go, aren't we? I want us to play around underneath here before we do. So let's just take that dark blue again, quite a strong color. And I'm going to catch it underneath here. You could put a little bit on top. I'm cleaning my brush and I'm taking the excess water off that. I'm using that this point of my brush now to push that back. And I'm using the point of my brush now just to kind of pull down these washes. So what that's doing is it's kind of giving that water a bit of depth, isn't it? We'll do it again. Let's put a darker colour underneath, maybe a smidge on the top. Here with the brush, pushing that back. And then the point of the brush, push, just pulling that down. And that helps then to create that shape. And just break that line up a little bit it, it just it's quite effective isn't it just that dark and that light maybe a little bit more i think here i'm going to put a few grasses here i liked what we did with this one where we just put a little clump here so I'm just going to do that with a mixture of the blue and the yellow together, just so it's giving me that nice dark colour that I'm looking for. Pop a few in there as well. Blue underneath so we get that nice shadowy colour. If you want to, you can introduce a bit of yellow into that as well, it's fine. And again, I'm going to use the end of my brush now, I'm just going to pull out some of those shapes, there we go, smudging that about a bit. Oh, now doing that has actually given us an opportunity here because unlike the other one, we came in here. So we could actually include a little reflection there that might be quite nice. So again, we're putting a little bit of dark onto the edge here, and we're going to put a little bit of dark underneath. I'm going to use the heel of the brush to push that back, and we're going to use the point of our brush just to soften that down, because what I think it would be quite nice to think about that reflection. So. It's, it's kind of veering to the right, isn't it? So if I put my brush down and then I echo that shape, it kind of gives us a, a feel, doesn't it? A feel of a reflection. adding a few more little bits now but to be honest with you I think that our little study is finished you could play about with a bit more you could uh, we've, we've used this technique on the last demonstration where we sprayed it so we we created lots of texture in here uh, you need to do that while it's still wet uh, but yeah I think we're pretty much done here and I'm hoping that the techniques we've used now get them under your belt practice them even if you don't paint a full finished picture practice them on scraps of paper and you'll be ready to move on to the next painting thanks for watching <laughs>